Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Where could a possibility exist in the material plane? I mean, possibility has to exist in a mind-like um, realm, and that uh, is implying a mind, mindful, living, conscious universe, as you said earlier. Let's move to the third dogma that you questioned. The total amount of matter and energy is always the same, with the exception of the Big Bang, when all matter and energy of the universe suddenly appeared. This is a big one. You're questioning the basic laws of uh, thermodynamics and the basic laws by which science has survived all these years, and it's, uh, it's something no one questions. So talk about that a little bit. Well, I didn't question it myself until, quite, until I started writing this book. I'd questioned all the other dogmas of science. This was the one that I thought might be true. And in a way, I wanted to find one dogma that was true because it would have sounded biased if I had found that all ten dogmas yeah. turn out to be false. So I actually quite wanted this one to be true. But as soon as I began to think about it, I realized that it's the most questionable of, of them all. Anyone who's been done physics at school has learned the law of conservation of matter and energy. The total amount of mm -hmm. matter and energy is always the same. But uh, physics, them, physics itself has ignored this, or at least they've not taken it too seriously. In the last 30 years, the total amount of matter in the uni and energy in the universe has increased enormously through the recognition of dark matter and dark energy, which now make up 96% of reality. The matter and energy we learned about at school is less than 4% of what's actually there. The remaining 96% dark matter and dark energy uh, is, uh, has a nature that is literally obscure. No one has a clue what dark matter and dark energy are. So we don't know whether they're conserved. We don't know if the total amount's the same or not. And <clears throat> the total amount recognized by physics changes from year to year as physicists adjust their equations. And they add in more or less dark matter to make their equations balance. And can that be converted to regular matter and regular energy? Nobody knows. So we simply don't know whether the total amount of matter and energy is always the same. Also, in the quantum vacuum field, which is, according to quantum physics, supposed to be a vast ocean of energy on which the world we know is like waves on the surface of the ocean, a vastly deeper ocean of energy, all that extra energy is recognized by science, but can we tap it? There are all sorts of people who make so-called above unity devices and free energy machines, which are totally taboo from the conventional scientific point of view. They're supposed to be impossible. But the inventors often claim they're tapping one of these other forms of energy that science now recognizes, uh, but doesn't take very seriously. I think we're in a position where we simply don't know. And the answers to this question have, could have profound implications. There could be other sources of energy that would totally transform the world's economy, but the exploration of them is ruled out by this very powerful taboo within science. And this is another area where a dogmatic way of thinking is severely limiting science itself. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.